Hi, welcome to Occupy Brooklyn TV. I'm Atik Zabinski. In this week's show, we'll focus on the growing anti-foreclosure movement in Los Angeles, as well as the rising movement to organize unskilled labor here in New York City. Also from New York City, we'll bring you stories of the Cooper Union student lock-in and the latest fight against the Spectra Fracked Gas Pipeline. In Los Angeles, Occupy's war on illegal home foreclosures is quickly gaining new soldiers and new battlefronts. In early October, foreclosure victim Margarita Lacero, a Mexican immigrant who does not speak English, saw a TV report of Occupy LA's successful eviction defense campaigns. She reached out to them for help, and they came immediately. Occupiers began a 24-hour vigil on the Lacero property. When marshals came from the sheriff's office to evict, they showed them papers proving the eviction was illegal and sent them away. They also began a series of actions to draw attention to the case. La razón por la que estoy aquí es porque el the reason why I'm here is because the bank uh, recently evicted me from a house. It's two houses and it's just one loan. And it all started because I asked for a loan modification and they gave me a set payment of six months. And if I paid the six months complete, they would give me a loan modification similar to that. And the bank didn't give me anything. No. They received a trial loan modification that gave them permission to make smaller payments so that the bank could use a loophole to steal all the money. The house currently in front of ours is my brother's and he has to leave on the 15th and I have to vacate my house on the 25th. I found out about Occupy LA because I saw them on TV and a lady that they helped uh, gave me information about Occupy LA. We're going to make sure that this family gets justice, that they are kept in their home. So we discussed it with the family and this is what the family wants. They want to stay in their home. This is a home to them for 16 years. Their kids were raised so here. This family has reached out to the community and we're going to help them in every way possible to help them keep their home. Cleaning cooking for the lady of the house, um, trying to take the load off of her. And when they would make the payment for $1,500, the bank would say, thank you for making your payment. You're doing a good job. And then they would register it as a partial payment, which would allow them to put it in a separate account. And that account is a bottomless pit that allows them to steal all of that money. And on the sixth month, when the final payment happens, they reject that payment and then they keep the last five months of money, and then they for, uh, proceed with the foreclosure. In this case, they did this by registering the homeowner's social security number incorrectly. Well, this is nothing new with what uh, Dutch Bank is doing here in the United States. They are committing major crimes, massive crimes against uh, American, the American people, families. So 12.30, we're asking that people meet us at the German consulate, where we're going to demand that they hold this bank accountable for all the fraud that they've committed across the United States. We have judges who, by all rights, should recuse themselves from every case that they're adjudicating right now. Um, the banks oversee the retirement accounts, the pension funds of these judges, which means just like the hedge funds swap in public funds at the last minute before these crashes happen, um, if a judge is not on the right side of where the banks want he or she to be, um, their pension can just as easily evaporate. So the people who they're supposed to be ruling against in cases when they're acting unjustly hold the keys to their financial security for the rest of their lives. That was a stunning development. When we discovered yesterday that the sheriffs were knowingly lying to us and knowingly using a language barrier and race as a divisive issue, as an attempt to paint this homeowner as incompetent, and as an attempt to say that, oh, if only you'd followed this process properly, everything would have been okay. This is trespassing. This is against the law. Come on, come on, out, out. Outside. Thanksgiving is a time, of course, celebrated by, by many people here in the United States uh, for different things, but we also remember that this is a time of, of deep mourning and an oppression against Native Americans that suffer massacre. So it's not all celebration. But at the same time, we are thankful that we have our many blessings in our lives in the company of so many great people, supporters, and, and, and people that are very uh, 
selfless in everything they do. They just gave them themselves. They give themselves in everything, in every way possible that I have not seen in all my years of my life. The people are standing together now. We're fighting back and we are not about to give up. If anything, we are going to intensify this and we're going to fight even harder. We're going to push with both hands. Is mensaje for the bank? Yes. Pero el mensaje para Dash Brand es de que se toque su corazón, que tenemos unos hijos que están fuera de la casa y los queremos con nosotros para atrás. Si ellos tienen sus hijos, sabrán el dolor que es de un padre que tus hijos no estén contigo. Por favor, negocien con nosotros. Gracias. December 6th was the one year anniversary of Occupy Our Homes. In one of several actions around the nation, protesters in L.A. erected a tent inside a Wells Fargo office. I did. My house went for foreclosure too, but I'm not acting like this. Please start yeah. making your way towards the So what did you do to save your home? Couldn't save Bank it. Bank is closed. Please we start making your way towards the door. Please. These people are saving homes. This is not the way to do it. These people, are, it's Sorry. working. These people are saving homes. It's the only way to do it. People are saving homes. This is the only, this is the only language people you. understand. So this is what this country is all about. The people of this country speaking out against the ills that are being done against the people of this country. Enough is enough. The banks got bailed out. We got sold out. They ruined the housing. We got sold out too. And they're taking it out on homeowners. Enough is enough. We're not taking it anymore. We're going to keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Get with it. 
New York's last free college is in danger of losing that status. Administration at Cooper Union plan to impose tuition for the first time in the college's 153-year history. On Monday, December 3rd, students staged a protest, during which 12 students locked themselves in the college's clock tower. They announced their presence by dropping a banner which blocked the window of the president's office below. The lock-in lasted seven days, during which time the banner remained in place. We were founded in 1859 by the great philanthropist and industrialist Peter Cooper, who uh, this building and the institution housed within it is considered his greatest achievement. Um, the only reason the school is trying to charge tuition for the first time uh, is because of the gross uh, financial mismanagement of the school's funds by the Board of Trustees. We've made it through two world wars and a Great Depression, and they are trying to sell this off as a recession. But this is a scandal. We've been in this problem for years, and they have been lying to us, to the public, and to the media about it. such a problem that even though they're not going to charge necessarily for the undergraduate school, they are proposing to charge for the graduate school. And to me, that's just a slippery slope because it's just a matter of time until um, they start to leech into everything else in this, that institution offers. Many groups expressed support and solidarity for the students, including the OWS-affiliated Strike Debt. Protesters adopted the color red to symbolize the connection between their struggle and the wider issues of student loans and other forms of debt. On Saturday, December 8th, we join them for a march and rally.
Cheryl is probably the oldest alumnus here. Yay! And one and one of the most beautiful. And one, and one of the most beautiful. <laughs> however, however, she can't speak too loudly. She can't speak too loudly. And I can. <laughs> We come from a generation. We come from a generation where we demonstrated. Where we demonstrated. And sometimes we won. And sometimes we won. And I hope you do. And I hope you do. Cooper Union administration has announced no punitive action will be taken against the students. In a minor concession to one of the student's demands, a student representative will be allowed to attend administrative meetings. However, the plan to impose tuition has not been scrapped. On November 29th, New York City fast food workers walked off the job in a one-day strike organized by New York Communities for Change. Workers complain about mistreatment, lack of benefits, and unbearably low wages. They demand a livable income and the right to unionize without company retaliation. We joined the workers as they rallied outside of McDonald's on 40th Street. One week later, on December 5th, several hundred demonstrators flocked to Times Square to show support for organizing fast food and other unskilled labor. After the rally, protesters were bussed down to Soho to picket the 6th Avenue car wash. We're here today, united, because we are faced the same challenge. How do we make our country, our economy work for working people? We want work to pay. that we call the United States has not become great on its own and without assistance. This country was built on the backs of minority men and women and immigrants who have worked many hard and long hours to make this country what it is today. These are the common folk, the ones that you see day to day getting the job done. The ones that you see rendering needed assistance. The ones that you see opening doors. The ones that you see cooking the foods, washing the cars, driving the cabs, working at Walmart, working in supermarkets and so on. These are the people that enable us to live a quality of life because these people have dedicated themselves to performing a service that has made them unsung heroes because they often go unnoticed. These very same people who have helped many of us live a comfortable life are often doing it while they themselves are operating with lack, working in environments that are unsafe, working without medical benefits, working without paid days off, and supervisors that are uncaring and unconcerned of their plight. This is simply unacceptable. 
We need good jobs and fair wages. We're not asking for anything special. We're asking to put food on the table for our families, for our parents and grandparents. That's what this fight is all about. Let's do it together. People of all different backgrounds, unions, community leaders, people in our neighborhoods, we're all gonna come together to fight for New York that's fair and equitable for everybody. It starts tonight. Are we together? I want to bring this message to you. We have 72,000 retirees. And we will back you. We will rally for you. Whatever you need, we are going to do it. All right. This is what it is. We are here fighting for our rights. If you look around, every single building here was built union. Yes or no? All right, brothers. We built the union. Carpenters came in. After us, painters, steam fitters, all union. After we left, who took care of it? 32 BJ. They're cleaning, they're porters, they're handymen. Who works around the area? Burger King, Wendy's, all the affected union workers are here where Bloomberg wants us to build and bring all the tourism here there are tourists here we built this city we want the right to earn a living to have benefits let's stop the nonsense workers people are going down to car wash in Soho that has been fighting the union and they are getting on buses on 40th Street and 7th, two blocks behind us. If you want to get on the bus and go put hundreds of people in front of this car wash, shut it down, then get on the bus. RWDSU has been uh, organizing car wash workers in New York this uh, past year and over the last two months about we've organized uh, four separate locations uh, in, the, in the city. Are they all owned by John Lage? Three of the four are owned by John Lage. Uh, he's sort of the car wash kingpin in New York. He owns uh, close to a couple of dozen locations in the New York area uh, and he's probably the largest player in the car wash industry in New York City. Um, and I understand he makes you know, millions of dollars off of these car washes. And what does he pay his workers? Yeah, he, he does uh, He does quite well. You'd have to ask him how well, but I don't think anybody has to worry about how he's doing. Uh, but you do have to worry about how the workers are doing. Uh, the folks at the car washes are often paid as little as $5.50 an hour. Um, we've had reports that people do not get the overtime. People have erratic schedules. They don't know when they're going to work, if they show up for work, how many hours they'll work. Uh, and trying to live in the city under those kind of conditions is, uh, is almost impossible. And you can imagine the hardships that people have to go through. On Saturday, December 1st, members of Occupy protested at the site of the Spectra fracked gas pipeline currently under construction in the West Village. They displayed pictures of loved ones whose health they considered threatened. Three protesters took part in an act of civil disobedience that ended without arrest. <laughs> You're not going over. I just told you you can't. Oh, oh, oh. We gotta stop these corporate actions that are ravaging our landscape, killing our species, contaminating our water supplies. We need to focus on developing alternative fuels that are renewable and clean. We gotta change the way Americans live. And the way to do that is continuing to educate people about the vast impact of fracking and other, way, other fossil fuels. Fracking is not the answer. New York, contra el gasoducto. And like Monica said earlier, we had 30,000, not 20,000, 30,000 people from all walks of life in Puerto Rico, in a small mountain town, get up and march and say no to the gasoducto. A gasoducto is a pipeline. It was going to be a 92 mile long pipeline. Puerto Rico is only 100 miles long. So again, the 
people, people. Got, up, got up, said no, said no. They, marched. they marched, they wrote, they, wrote. they, called. they called, they said no. Well, that's our show for this week. Be sure to tune in next week for our final weekly show before the spring. We will continue to post on YouTube slash Occupy Public Access TV, so be sure to subscribe to be informed whenever we have something new on the air. I'm Atik Zabitsky. Thanks so much for watching and for your support.